Sometimes the topics of our show segments go beyond the individual fish species we're after. That's the situation here, as we make a case for choosing the right reels to make the smooth retrieves often necessary to trigger fish. Beautiful start to the day. That is a big fish. Four inch power minnow there, one of my favorite fall baits. Man, beautiful fish. You know, so often in these programs we talk the presentation process because that is, of course, how you finally put fish in the boat. So always right combination, rod, reel, line, and then typically we talk about the lures so often. But today what I want to do is I want to take a different tact and I want to talk about spinning reels specifically. How they operate and how to choose the, the, the best, not the, just the best ones, but the right one for what you happen to be doing. So back we go, big buddy. And you know, so the fundamental, most typical advice that you will see when it comes to advice about choosing a spinning reel is that line size is going to determine your reel size or your choice of the reel. So four pound line, six pound line, you're gonna go with a smaller reel. Heavier line, you're gonna go with a, a bigger reel. Now, nothing wrong with that advice, except that for the most part, when it comes to reel efficiency, uh, all around longer casts, smoother retrieves, total efficiency. You don't want to choose a smaller reel. You want to err on the side of always choosing a little bit larger reel. So basically, in most line reel lineups, you're going to have at least four different sizes of reels. So in every Revo lineup, you've got on the bottom end a 10, then a 20, a 30 class, and then finally the largest size, a 40 class. And sometimes you'll have half classes in there, but not in the Revo lineup. So Small reel, large reel. The most fundamental reel that you're going to be using is on the upper end, so a 30. And a lot of times you're going to want to go to the 40, though. And it's not just line size, it's reel efficiency. These guys on the smaller end are going to get chosen a lot to go with ultralight tackle. But there's just a lot of time, instead of choosing the 10 for ultralight work, you should go with the 20. So always err on the size of a little bit larger reel than you would normally put on the rod that you're going to be uh, matching it with. They're not bad, they're all fun, that's for sure. Fall afternoon here, before the water temperature crashes. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, is this fish is so much more beautiful, actually, than that other one. Just look at the how bronze that one is. Just beautiful. Wow. And, you know, one of the secrets to fishing these jigs like this, and it could be a hair jig, the four inch power minnow here is one of my favorites this time of year. And one of the secrets is to make a long cast and then just swing or just swim it along ever so easily. I call it flagging, you give it a little tip every once in a while so the, the tail on that thing just wags and attracts fish. And it's all part and parcel of the combination of the reel uh, and of course the rod also, but the reel is vital in its smoothness and of course you get in many cases what you pay for so the upper end revos are have more ball bearings so they're smoother but there's more to the smoothness and the sensitivity in a retrieve than that. So these spinning reels uh, just like a casting reel they have a retrieve ratio to them and all of the revos all six of them in the lineup have the same retrieve ratio at 6.2 to 1. So retrieve rate uh, has to do with the diameter of the spool and of course the retrieve ratio. So that 10, every time you go around one time, one reel turn with the 10, you pick up 30 inches of line. The 20 size will pick up 33 inches, the 30 size is going to pick up 35 inches, and then the 40 size is going to pick up 40 inches of line for every turn of the handle. You go around one time, the bale goes around six times. So one, one Turn of the reel handle means six wraps of uh, line right here if you have a six to one retrieve ratio. So it's the combination of that retrieve ratio speed, that retrieve speed, and the diameter of the spool. And that is a matter of efficiency again and smoothness because what you want is you don't want to be having to do the egg beater thing with the little tiny reels going around fast, fast, fast. You're having to make a lot of uh, turns of the reel handle and that's what ruins sensitivity. It's smoothness, it's being able to wrap and just ease that reel handle along and that always is more efficient with a bigger reel. 
It's just so vital at this time of the year, a lot of times you just swim that jig along just so smoothly. For most of what we do in fresh water, that 30 size reel is gonna be just really fundamental, no matter what rod that you've chosen. Or you can go with a 40. The 40 is a good choice too. Beautiful fish. What a morning to be on the water. Look at this. These fish are unbelievable. Look at the stomach on that guy. Look at that. Just incredibly beautiful. And what a day. Perfect fall. This is probably gonna be the last of the, for a while, uh, at least on open water for the smallmouth deal. The wind's gonna come up. The water temperature's gonna crash. And I tell you what, when it comes to spinning reels, it doesn't have to be complicated choosing the right reel. Yeah, you're gonna get what you pay for. You know, on the upper end, you get more ball bearings, it's gonna be smoother on that end, but for the most part, don't go with these little tiny reels with the low retrieve ratio. About a 6.2 to one is just about what you're looking for, and always err on the size of a little bit larger reel, not a little bit smaller reel. You'll be able to make longer casts, your retrieves will be smoother, and you'll have a lot more efficient process overall.